Standard 7 SP5 through SP8 are about probability. So 7 SP5 specifically is about the likelihood of probability. And these are all going to be numbers, by the way, that are between 0 and 1. Where 0 means it's impossible to happen, 1 means it will happen. Number 7, Stacy uses a spinner with 6 equal sections numbered 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 to play a game. Select all true statements. The first says the probability of landing on an odd numbered section is 33.3 repeating percent. Well, the odd numbers are 3 and 5, so there is a 2 out of 6 chance, which is the decimal point 3 repeating which does come out to be about 33.3 .3 repeating percent, so that is true. The next says it's impossible to land on seven. Well, seven is not a choice, so there's zero sevens out of six, so that is zero, so that is impossible, true. The next says it's less likely to land on odd than an even number section. We already said the odd number section was 33.3% .3 for odd, about 33%. The even numbered section would be 4 out of 6, which is 0.6 repeating, which is about 67%. So this is true. The fourth choice says it's certain that it'll land on a number less than 6, but 6 is a choice, so that's false. The next one says it's fair. Well, 6 occurs twice, or two times, while the others only occur once, so it's not fair. And then the last choice, it is most likely to land on the number 6, since it occurs multiple times. Number 8, watching the weather forecast, you can read the probability of a storm happening tomorrow. Match each term to the corresponding probability of a storm happening tomorrow. The first says the probability of a storm is less than half. So it's unlikely to happen if there's less than half a chance of it happening. The next one says the probability is greater than half. Well, that means it's likely to happen. There's more than half a chance, so more than likely it'll happen. The next one says the probability of the storm is equal to one. That means it is certain it will happen. And then if the probability is zero, that means it will not happen. It is impossible. Standard 7 SP6 is about probability. We have two types. We have theoretical, which means um, the probability of something happening in theory, what you would expect. And then we have experimental. This is the probability of what actually happens in an experiment when you actually try um, to do an experiment and see what's going to happen. So we're going to look at problem number four. It says Sasha uses a spinner with six equal sections number two, three, four, five, six, and six to play a game. Sasha spins the pointer 120 times and records the results. Okay, and it gives you all the results here, and it tells you a winning number, a winning spin is a six. So find the theoretical probability and the experimental probability of winning, and then compare the two. So if they're all equal sections, let's start with the theoretical probability. A winning spin is a six, and so we have two. Choices that are 6 out of 6 equal sections, and so that would be 0.3 repeating, which is about 33%. So about 33% would be your theoretical probability, what you would expect in theory. Now we're going to find the experimental probability. So what actually happened there? Well, it landed on a 6 32 times out of 120 spins. So let's find that decimal, 32 divided by 120, 
is 0 0.26 repeating, which is about 27%. Which one was greater in this case? The theoretical probability, it was a higher number. It's not what actually happened, but it's what you would have expected. Number nine, Sanji throws a 10-sided number cube with faces numbered one through 10. Select all the correct probabilities for the results. So the first one, the probability of choosing an even number is one out of 10. That's not true because five out of the 10 sides are even. The next one is the probability of a multiple of three is three out of 10. So we have to think about our multiples of three. Um, we have three, six, nine. So there's three of those out of 10, so that's true. The probability of an odd number is one half. Well, five or half of the 10 numbers are odd, which does reduce to one half, so that's true. The next one, the probability of a number greater than 10 is zero. Well, there are no numbers greater than 10, so that's true. The probability of the number 10 is one. That's not true, it's one out of 10. And then the probability of a factor of 15 is one fourth. We have to think of what factors of 15 there are. We could multiply three and five to get 15, and that's it. So really we have two out of the 10, which is 1 fifth, not 1 fourth, so that's not true. Standard seven, SP7, is about probability models, and really we're just looking at models and answering questions about them. So starting with problem four, it says the spinner shown has eight equal size, sized sections. In an experiment, the pointer lands on an odd number 55 times out of 125 spins. Select all the true statements. The first says the pointer lands on odd more often than expected. Well, we would expect, you would expect that the odd would be one, three, five, and seven, four out of eight, which is 50% of the time. Um, but it actually lands on odd, 55 out of 125, which as a decimal, 55 divided by 125 is 0.44, which means 44% of the time. So it actually landed on odd, not more often, but less often than expected. The next one says the theoretical probability of landing on even is 44%, but in theory, the even number would be 50% because once again, it'd be four out of eight. The experimental probability of landing on an odd number is 44%. We found that here. And then it's equally likely that the pointer will land on an, off, an uneven or odd number. That's true. Um, it's not based on what experimentally happened. Just the next time the spinner spun, there's a one out of two chance of landing on odd or landing on even. So they're equal chances. Number six. 280 students at Florida universities are randomly sampled and asked, on what day of the week were you born? The results are in the table. Assuming that each day has an equal theoretical probability, which day of the week has the most unusual observed frequency in the sample? Well, we know there's 280 students and there are seven days in the week. So on average, you would expect there would be 40 students each day, but we do know it's gonna vary in reality. Um, the one that's furthest to the most unusual would be Friday because it's so far away. The expected amount 40 minus 22 is 18. It's so far away from uh, what's expected. So that's answer choice D. Standard seven SP eight is broke down into three little mini standards, A, B, and C, and we're gonna just focus on A and B. And these are um, dealing with combinations. So let's look at problem three. It says, Joanna flips a coin and then she spins a spinner with four equal sections. 
What's the probability that the coin flips heads and the spinner lands on either red or purple? Okay, so let's start with um, flipping a coin and getting heads. The probability of flipping a coin and landing heads is one half. That's for landing on heads. Now let's look at um, the probability of the spinner landing red or purple out of four sections. Well, that's um, red or purple. That's two out of the four. And we just multiply those probabilities. So we get one times two is two, two times four is eight, which is one fourth. And we're gonna go to the nearest percent, which is 0.25 as a decimal, which is 25%. Number nine, make a tree diagram that shows the sample space of spinning a fair spinner labeled one through five and flipping a fair coin. Then using the tree diagram, what's the probability of spinning the number three and the coin landing heads up? So I'm gonna start with my tree diagram. I've got a spinner labeled one through five. So I'm gonna do five branches. I could do it on its side or I could do this up and down, either one. I'm gonna go on its side and say, okay, one, two, three, four, and five. And then we have a coin. So it's gonna have a choice between heads or tails every time, heads or tails. And so we've made a tree diagram here. And now using this, let's find the probability of landing on the number three The number three and then the coin landing heads up. It's only one out of the ten possibilities here. So one tenth and that would be about ten percent. Number ten. Mary's making gift bags that each have exactly one toy, one candy, and one page of stickers. How many different gift bags can Mary make? Well, there's three different toy options, three different candy options, and three different sticker options. So we're gonna just multiply three times three times three, which is 27 different gift bags. Part B, if all the options are equally likely, what's the probability of randomly choosing a gift bag that does not contain the pony? Okay, well, she, would, she could choose from two out of the three toys has a sucker or a gumball, that would be two out of the three candies, and has heart stickers, that's one out of the three stickers. So we'll multiply two thirds times two thirds times one third is four over 27, and that comes out to 0.148 as a decimal. We'll move our decimal two places right, and it rounds to about 15%.